It just you have a lovely voice. It Sing some more. Yeah, it doesn't sit well at all with like fucking sound garden. No, what jobs have you been doing with since you, you lost your job in the labyrinth? <laughs> Actually, there's another. <laughs> Are you calling me what's he's a Hogart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, no, you you're you're the slug creature that like shows her the secret door. God, I haven't seen that in so long. Ooh, jump, magic, jump. Go ahead, jump. <laughs> magic jump. But, yes. I think you, you you mentioned it briefly, but I think it, it definitely made a resurgence and it definitely um needs a bit more kind of being up because it, it definitely has really helped well, up until recently it's really helped get um kind of original motion like uh, soundtrack, original compilation soundtracks back into the movies is Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Two, both yeah. of which have mm-hmm. great great soundtracks they did uh, reintroduce a whole generation to mixtapes which this podcast is named after yes. mixtapes because it's varied music indeed the taste so that's what you do. Um, but yeah, yeah. They, we're, they, supposed, they, we're, we're a bit of a rabbit hole for you to go down and find more things to go listen to <laughs> go down your rabbit hole taste. if you want to my rabbit hole is <laughs> <Yeah>, extremely <yeah. laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> suppose an honourable me- mention as well, just because of the impact that it had for the time, was the Dirty Dancing soundtrack. Oh God, yeah, of course. I fucking hate every single song on it. But, uh, By Jesus, every single girl in my school, because I would have been of that sort of age, or sort of, I was just young enough that all of the girls that were older than me were like, "Oh my God!" Girl, my brother-in-law, that's like fifteen years or twenty <laughs> years older than me. I've ever been in a car with him, and he was going by playing like I've had the time of my life, blasting with the windows. Do you think down. he was crazy? And there was like a funeral going by. Like, oh god! <laughs> and like where they were like walking with cough, and I was like, "You fucking idiot!" Yeah, well, um, they might have had the time of their life, all right though. Mm. But yeah, that that oh, would have been beautiful. A that was after we Oh, well, um, nice one. I can actually remember at my school they put on like dirty dancing plays. Bunch of eight year olds putting on like, "Oh, let's mm. recreate dirty dancing." I'm like, really? Well, this is a convent school. Didn't get this. Should not. Oh have. my god! How did I forget this? What? Oh, but. Transformers, the movie soundtrack. I was waiting as in the cartoon. Do your, your, your Stan Bush, yes. musical genius. Absolute musical. <laughs> well, you've got the touch. Part. You've got the power. Did the pedophiles remind you of that? They did, you actually. Got the touch. That's what I got touched when I was listening <laughs> to the Transformers. By Stan Bush. He was like, you don't look like out from his prime. <laughs> Hold on to my ion pipe. <laughs> you need to suck the energy out of it, little boy. Otherwise, Cybertron will be destroyed. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> hey, by the way, soundtracks, South Park. Oh, movie. yeah. South Park, you just yeah. reminded me. But that's musical. I suppose. Well, ah, fuck musicals. No, we're not talking about musicals yeah. on this. Well, there's um, there's a lot of films are built around one song in particular as well, like Ghostbusters too. Didn't all the city come along singing well, like, to that when, song? Yeah, but that one wasn't actually on the soundtrack. I did have the soundtrack <laughs> of Ghostbusters too. Yeah, and it was a lot of kind of like R and B stuff on oh, it, and shit. that made. I think it was. What's Nor Kelly? What was he? I can't remember. Bobby Brown. Or the, like, no, Bobby Brown. It was like, oh, I guess we're going to have to take control. We got, we got, we got, we got, we got to. It wasn't a hit. It didn't yeah, have no, that. I wasn't of, even talking about the Ghostbusters team tune. I was, you know, the the other song. Where... Yeah, but that's on the actual soundtrack. Oh, okay. It's the same as <laughs> kind of like with the Lost Boys. You know, when he's in the bathtub and he's singing. Um, oh, yeah. I got, and as well, they have the whole Run DMC thing and. Um, Aerosmith playing at the bonfire and that's not all I was like why couldn't you? get the right really surprised yeah. we actually none of us have brought this up now it, it seems like we're kind of we're hopping between the 80s and early 90s and then very modern and mm-hmm. we're kind of missing out on early 2000 ones because mm, there was a I, huge resurgence of ones during the early 2000s Shrek that too. were well not well uh, we were talking about those but I mean like we kind of talked briefly about those but I mean like the ones in teen movies like American Pie Sure. Oh well, yeah, actually very true. Well, there, there was a couple of horror movie ones I remember at the time that were kind of big, which I like, like Dracula two thousand. Actually, that I think that was the first time I heard Lincoln Park. There was a couple of these kind of ones that came along. Um, oh my it? god, do you remember the end of Spider Man with Nickelback? Oh god, yeah. Oh my fucking god! I yeah. worked in a cinema at the time, and I used to do it clear out at the end of that. Was, I must yeah. have heard that song like fifty thousand times. It was, it was How just insane so funny. were you by the end of that then? Because Incredibly. I actually really enjoyed that, but I can imagine if you were listening to it again and again and again. I, I kind of I liked it at the start, but by the end, it was just like, oh my fucking god! How many more times do I have to hear this fucking song? Mm. 
And they said a hero could sing. But yeah, that's what that's Not it for for this part. The yeah, Laura can sing us out anyway. No, um, well, I just one honourable men- or well, a couple of honourable mentions before we go for people to check out because at some stage we're going to do ten best soundtracks <laughs> <laughs> from horror movies. Mm. Um, but Return of the Living Dead, it doesn't get enough credit. The soundtrack for that, it's brilliant. The damned fucking Rocky Erickson is on it. It's really, really very, but it's it, it, amazing soundtrack. The X Files soundtrack is actually amazing. there's a Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper song on that called In the Hands. Of, this one, this is something that we didn't mention as well. A lot of these soundtracks, the, the, the songs were only on those soundtracks. They weren't off albums, which mm. a lot of things do now, where they're just like playlists. So. Whereas before they were unique to that, so you'd have to buy the soundtrack to listen to that song. And then you discover all these other kind of like bands on it as well, which now everything is very much kind of like, oh, well, I only like that song. So I'll just add that song into my playlist and not. Isn't it? There the are great ways of discovering and, music. And then Wayne kicks in the door of that 12 year old boy's room and goes, No, you don't understand. You don't listen to the full soundtrack. You don't understand the complexity and nuances of the thing. And the child's like, Get out of my room. Are we speaking to Shrek memory? is the devil. What's <laughs> <laughs> your ass? Hmm. Oh, great Odin's Raven. Now, for the bit where we're going to be introducing a uh, newish, well, they're not a new band, they've been around for a bit. Um, but a band that I've only recently discovered that I'm going to try and recommend to people out there called Grin. Um, the album that we're going to be talking about a bit is their second album called Translucent Blades. Uh, they are put themselves down as being, well, other people put them down as being a psychedelic metal band, which I suppose is a fair enough description. I think there's a lot more to them than that because it conjures up a certain kind of sound, which they're, it's one of the things I thought when I found Grin I found him on Bandcamp um, it blew me away straight I was kind of on a high on fire vibe at the time and I was like oh yeah it's kind of stone or metal and like it's one that it reminds me a lot of when I listened to the Downward Spiral at first or the Downward Spiral you listen to it and you go my god that's an amazing album then you realise holy shit there's so many layers to this and this uh, Translucent Blades fucking multi-layered I can't like it's easy to turn around and say oh if you like I like sleep or whatever listen to these guys obviously if you like sleep listen to these guys as well but I think there's an awful lot more going on with them um, like there's bits of Velvet Underground I kind of taught in there Sonic Youth um, they remind me an awful lot of Cathedral early Cathedral Cathedral one of my favourite bands of all time um they're just it, it's the sound production on this is amazing but kind of like I suppose just a little bit about um, Green anyway they come it's a husband and wife couple called Jan and Sabine Oberg uh, they also play in a band called Earthship which they're a good band as well <laughs> but they are more I suppose traditional in my view compared to Green Green seems more experimental than Earthship not that Archip isn't somewhat experimental, but they're more psychedelic metal, I think, than mm. Grin. Um, but I suppose this is the problem with Grin because it's it's very hard. I think genres are always shit anyway, but it's very, very hard to put them into one thing and it's very hard to describe what they're because I can't think of anything that they do really sound like on their own, mm. you know, or another band that's very similar to them. Um, but yeah, Translucent Blades is their new... Uh, album and yeah there's very very little kind of written up about the the lads at all but um kind of like they they made the, the the record just between the two of them with Jan he does the drums singing and guitar and Sabine does the bass and singing as well and the, there's keyboards in there there's flutes in there. there's uh, there's loads of different instruments in there I can't because when I said we're going to, when we decided that we're going to do this podcast initially it was like yeah it'd be great if we could talk about newer bands or bands that we're just after discovering ourselves that we'd like to kind of talk about or give a bit of a push um and I thought, yeah, this would be kind of like straightforward. And fuck, the more I listened to it, I was like, oh my God, how do I describe this? So I suppose getting started, the best way to do things is we uh, reached out to uh, Grin and we asked, would it be okay if we use some of their songs? Just so you guys can figure out what they sound like. So I suppose here's kind of like, you know, uh, a little bit from the first song on the track, uh, on the app track on the album called Helix.
So yeah, I suppose that that's probably one of the heavier, kind of like more straightforward songs on it. Uh, where there's kind of like more of a kind of a black metal-y feel to it. But I think there's a bit of a Bloody Valentine vibe going on there as well. Um, is it, what, or is it just me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, I don't know. What what I really like about this band is just, there's just, it's like a wall of noise. There's just this steady fucking ominous drone and sort of, it's you're just constantly getting assaulted by this sort of like wash of like really deep, dark, heavy bass the whole time. And it's just this real powerful sort of, do you know, fuzz, I suppose. It's, it's like with the mix that the volume is up really, really loud, but it creates this kind of like drone underneath mm. it that you kind of like it's like nearly hypnotic yeah there's that hypnotic kind of like feel through the and as the album progresses some of the songs get more dreamlike mm. and then when Sabine starts singing as well there's that more of a dreamlike quality to yeah. it like there's a, one of the songs coming near the end of uh, the album where it's oh which one is it, is it I think it's Electric Eye um I don't know it's not Electric Eye it's oh shit I can't remember which one but it's it's all just it's just an instrumental piece but it's very 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 soft and very and it's it's I don't know it is really it just fucking I don't know it reminds me of like 70s horror movies mm. as well there's that quality to it but it, I, like I'm struggling to that's why we really wanted to kind of because we knew that we couldn't play music without kind of people's consent and I was just trying to describe what these guys have done that's, just, that's the thing it's, it's, you nearly need to leave, leave the music speak for itself because it is even saying that it's like this wall of noise that kind of like this fuzz that kind of associate that doesn't do it justice because that sounds like it's it's almost sort of like I don't know angry and sort of it's not it's it's almost like this it's like a welcome assault if you know what I mean you just want to sit there and experience it some more do you know what I mean it, it, like I mean there's a lot of people that they say went with sleep with say the, the chugging kind of riffs that it's the same riffs over and over mm. again and the riff could go on for like half an hour. Um, but you don't get, this is, it, the, I don't get that with the riffs with Grin. Mm. It feels like there is the, the hypnotic kind of thing comes from the, the production, the sound. There's there's just, this like what you were saying, nearly a hum mm. carrying through it, which reminds me a lot of stuff like the, not the birthday mask or fucking my bloody Valentine. And um, Sonic Youth with some of the songs mm. where there was that kind of the fuzz, I suppose. But it, it's just, I'm lost for words. <laughs> well, You're not often lost for words. I, yeah, and good. it is because when I did, it was like, ah, yeah, this is going to be they're just kind of, but they are like, they were, like we went off and uh, bought the EP and a few other bits and pieces. The EP, the vinyl um, and a few other pieces because they are, and it's always great when you do discover a band that they've been out there. So at least you can go back and listen to yeah. their other stuff as well. Um, where they have one album out before that, or is it an, an EP actually mm. um, before that? But uh, you've been listening to them quite a bit, Laura, as yeah. well. What do you think? Well, that's, I mean, like, I tend to take a few listens to an album before I actually sort of get into it because you know the way you listen to something at first and you're like yeah whatever but you kind of you have to listen to it a few times before you actually get an album to get it, let, let it sink its hooks into you and this certainly does that mm. you listen to it and you suddenly kind of go oh I didn't hear that first time around and oh god I, there's another new instrument no oh, I can actually suddenly the vocals make sense to you now as well and it's, it is it's just like you could just sort of just lie there and just let it wash over you a few times as well it's just it is just this real sort of as you said, it's sort of this hypnotic kind of dreamlike kind of state that you get into, but it's not one of these like happy dappy sort of hippie dreamlike states. It's just this really kind of, it's like a really powerful sort of like strong dreamlike state. That sounds really weird to say, but you know, I don't know if you kind of get what I mean by that. It's just, it seems like a really centered, like fucking drawing your energy from the fucking center of the earth, like oceans crashing kind of dreamlike state. <laughs> 